You know that scene in, in Mary Poppins, the, the Walt Disney film from the 1960s, where she's coming in and, and she's unpacking her bag. It's a small bag, but she starts pulling out all these huge things, a, a hat rack and, and a plant and a mirror. And the children are just watching in amazement. And they run over and they, they stick their head in and they're wondering, how in the world is she doing this? That's one of my favorite films and I love that scene because it demonstrates what it means to realize the impossible. And it's similar to the topic I'm going to talk about today. The concept of personal global economies and how they are redefining entrepreneurial success. And to tell that story, I'm going to go down a journey of two individuals that I'll be sharing with you. But first, I want you to think about the typical entrepreneur and the challenges that, that they have. In the United States alone, the stats show that only 4% of businesses ever reach the million dollar mark. Businesses, after two years, 30% fail. 50% fail after the first five years from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. We're going to talk about more of those, but just let those stats resonate with you and how significant that is. So back to the two individuals we're going to talk about. So first is Jana, young woman, entrepreneur in, in the U.S. She went to school for design, but decided that wasn't ultimately what she wanted to kind of do long term. She wanted to start a business. She wanted to be an entrepreneur. And based on some personal experience, she wanted to help senior citizens and their families have a better way to find elderly care facilities. And so she went about launching this business, trying to get a website built, trying to get a logo done, trying to get a mobile app built. And it was just so expensive and consuming time and costs and found herself maxing out her credit cards, moving back in with her parents at the age of, of 32 and near bankruptcy. Then she learned about the world of personal global economies, how she could connect with individuals in other parts of the world that are super talented and bright, but you know, where the, the US dollar stretched a lot further and they could make a great income and be affordable for her. And she built a team and she ended up being able to get a website done and got a, a, a mobile app built and even doing this thing called data scraping and generating lists and lists of leads for pennies on the dollar. Changed her life and changed her business. Fast forward 18 months, she was doing over half a million dollars in revenue. And get this, she ended up creating 11 jobs in her local country, in her local economy. That's the misperception on a lot of this as well. Is a lot of people think it's about shipping jobs overseas and, and, and taking away local opportunities. Well, when you create a business that thrives and creates customers, there's demand for local talent needs as well. Let's look at another individual, Jessa. Grew up in a country like the Philippines in a small village with a dirt floor, livestock around. Mom was a beautician, her dad drove a motorcycle taxi. Very limited opportunities in a small province. But she was bright, she was smart, she had a desire to do something more with her life and she even put herself through college, got a four-year college degree and didn't want to get a local low-paying job or, or go work in, in one of the larger call center environments. And so she ended up, through personal global economies, finding an entrepreneur in the U.S. that she worked with and built her skills and, and showed what she was capable of. And fast forward in this few years, she was helping manage hundreds of employees and helping grow and build that company. Changed her life and changed that entrepreneur's life. It's amazing what happens when these personal global economies get created, when people like Jana come together with people like Jessa, it redefines entrepreneurial success and opportunities. So let's dig a little bit further into this. Why, why, why do these personal global economies ha have such an impact on solving the challenges of entrepreneurs? Well, myself being an entrepreneur for you know, 20 years and interacting with hundreds of them, there's many challenges and difficulties entrepreneurs face. But I'll share just three that I see as some of the biggest constraints and growth challenges. First, risk. A lot of entrepreneurs never even get a business off the ground or those that are starting never grow because of concerns about two types of risk, time risk and money risk. When it comes to time, they don't have time to start a side hustle. Right? They don't have time to take away from, from the family and, and, and relationships a lot of times of how consuming it can be, the, the normal way that people try and start and, and build a business. Financial or money risk. Trying to go to a bank and, and get a loan to start a business, well, a lot of times they want two years of tax returns of a successful business before you can get money 
to start a business. So I gotta have a successful one before I can start. A bit of a chicken and an egg problem there. Or go to get money from an angel investor or venture capital who wanna see you have a proven track record but you don't have one because you're just starting or credit cards. Dig a deeper hole by going into you know, 20 to 24% interest rate, maxing out credit cards and expenses. So time and money risk are a constraint for entrepreneurs starting and growing a business. Second, lack of access to knowledge and resources. Not, not having the knowledge about how to do a business plan or, or how to identify who are all the competitors in a market, if they should even start a business or not, or even knowing how to build a financial model or a plan, is the business gonna make money or not? Lack of knowledge and resources. And thirdly, the inability to sustain a setback, a challenge. Uh, assuming that a, a business owner is able to get together the amount of money it takes to launch the business and, and find the time to make it happen, they had a setback, a challenge. And because of their cost structure, they can't sustain and get through that setback. They don't have the agility to make their dollar stretch and be lean. And so they end up failing. So those are three of the big challenges that a lot of entrepreneurs face, either starting a business or trying to grow one. So how do personal global economies help solve these challenges? Right? They don't solve them all and it's not always a perfect world, but they can help overcome those challenges. When it comes to time constraints, I mean, people don't need to sacrifice all their relationships with their spouse, their family, their children, their friends. I mean, you can get a, a virtual staff in another country that's sharp and bright, even a four-year college degree for a few hundred dollars a week. They're making fantastic money, and it's an affordable cost on, on the other side of the equation to be able to get operation stuff done and marketing things and to generate leads and to do bookkeeping and all the things that it takes to start and grow a business or financial or money constraint, right? They're, they're not sure what it takes to, to get a business off the ground or the cost that it ends up taking. And they can, you know, data scrape and get a set of leads or create a business plan for a few hundred dollars in a week. What about lack of knowledge and, and resources, right? Say that you got the idea for, you know, launching the next great pet food business in St. Louis, Missouri, but you want to get a list of all the distributors of how to grow and build that business. Well, you can get a list of them for a few hundred dollars, you know, in a few days. Or you got the next great garden hose idea, but you're not sure how to manufacture, get the parts. You can go to platforms like an Alibaba and, and, and get those resources done fast and low cost and, and minimal inventory requirements. Or you're not sure how to do a financial model if the business is going to make money. I mean, you, you can go and hire someone in, in another country. I, I did one time in, in Bangkok and found someone who was a, an absolute whiz in Excel and financial modeling and built an entire financial model for a few hundred dollars. And it was great money for them and it helped me figure out if a business could be successful. Or what about overcoming setbacks? I mean, myself in, in my last business, we, we, were, we were growing and we had a, a product disaster happen and we had to do tons of returns and, and just run into a ton of issues with this product. Well, that's when I learned about personal global economies, how I was able to identify these resources all over the world, fast and low cost, to help me save that business at that time. And take COVID as an example. How many business owners struggled and, and gone out of business? Those that know about how to leverage personal global economies, it's really defined their entrepreneurial success in setback times. They're able to identify new opportunities, make dollar stretch, get lean to get through a crisis like COVID. I mean, in less than two weeks and for $500 or less, you can start or grow a business. I had someone for less than $100 data scrape and create a whole list, looking at articles, looking at social media and finding out where are their growth opportunities because of COVID so that we could look at places to grow and expand. Understanding personal global economies lets you be lean and nimble and do things that you never would have been able to do otherwise. And on the other side of the equation, you're changing people's lives, families. In India, for example, minimum wage is around $60 per month. When you pay someone there who's built skills on how to build a website for a few hundred dollars, you're helping to put one of their children through college potentially. And the same goes in a lot of other countries in, in this world that have lower value currencies relative to the US dollar and some other countries as well. In the Philippines, for example, close to 800,000 people are graduating with four-year college degrees that are bright and sharp and looking for opportunities. And they don't necessarily wanna go work in a low paying local job in some cases. We know those economies need people to work those jobs, but maybe they at least want to have options, opportunities to do other things. They can work with entrepreneurs and business owners all over the world, change their life, and change their direction. 
but you got to do your part as well. If you're engaging these personal global economies and hiring someone, treat them like human beings. Get to know them. Get to know their family. Create a relationship just like you would with someone that you would hire locally. I got a chance to, to do a think tank once at the United Nations headquarters on the sustainable development goals. And specifically, number eight, economic growth and decent work for all. I can't think of a better example than personal global economies. So circling back to those two individuals, Jana and, and Jess, who I talked about. Jana with her challenges, her typical constraints, time and money risk, lack of access to knowledge and resources, not able to sustain setbacks. This changed her world. And on the other side, Jessa, having limited opportunities, growing up in a low-income situation, create a whole new world of opportunity for her. And when you bring these worlds together, it's incredible what happens. It redefines entrepreneurial success. And in some of these countries, when you pay them to do work, they're actually hiring local people there as well. So they're creating jobs, creating businesses in their local economies. So what about you? How does this affect you? Maybe you're in a place where you're wanting to start a business, wanting to start a side hustle, take the entrepreneurial path, but you're dealing with some of those constraints and challenges that I talked about. Or maybe you're in one of these countries that I mentioned and you're sharp and you're bright and you're just looking for something more and want a new opportunity. Well, this is an opportunity to bring those worlds together and how personal global economies on both sides of the equation are redefining entrepreneurial success. So I encourage you to maybe take a look back at that Mary Poppins film and that scene where she's pulling a five-foot hat rack out of a two-foot bag and realizing the impossible. Thank you.